guys. I'm going to show you how I clean my silicone tail. I just got back from the San Marcos Aquafair. It's a mermaid festival down in San Marcos. And we swam a lot in our silicone tails in the river, so our tails are very, very grody. And so I decided that today would be the best day to show you guys my process. The first thing you, you want to do is gather your materials. Obviously, you want your dirty tail. And you're gonna want one of these, it's a body brush. I got this idea from Raina Mermaid and I also know that Mermaid Phantom also uses this technique. Uh, it's just a brush that you use for your body. If your tail is made properly, it won't chip your paint. And I use distilled white vinegar. And I just get the Walmart brand. It, does, it doesn't really matter like what brand you use. First, you fill your tub up like halfway with water. I have a little cup here that I use to put the water into the tail. I'll pour, I'll kind of eyeball it and pour maybe like a cup or two cups of vinegar into the water. And this, it's not a lot of water. The idea is to just soak the inside and the outside of your tail. So. Smell test. If it smells like vinegar, you're doing it right. The third step is going to be making sure that the foot pockets are clear. You don't have any socks left in there or um, stabilizers. I have these plastic stabilizers that keep the pocket from collapsing. This is what it looks like. Um, the weight of the silicone is really heavy and so sometimes if you don't have the stabilizers in, your rubber foot pockets will collapse under the weight of the silicone. So it's important to have those stabilizers in when you're not using your tail. Um, the next step is to flood your tail. So you take that cup that I showed you earlier and then you just pour water into the tail at least until you get part way through until you know the majority of the body is flooded with water. Then you're going to want to push the water with pressure through the tail. Um, my tail has drain holes and so I'll do like a resuscitating slash CPR kind of motion on the body. I got that from a mermaid phantom. And then what I'll do next is I'll use the body brush to scrub the outside of the tail focusing really on the fluke and the outside body of the tail. When you're doing the scrubbing, make sure that you're not pushing too hard or you're not being very rough with the tail. You want to be firm but not too hard. I hope that makes sense. Um, and don't forget to also scrub the inside, uh, the inside body of the tail. I like to fold mine over to get access um, to the upper half of the tail. And I like to do sweeping motions, outward sweeping motions. So I'll put the brush in and then I'll sweep it outward. Um, and I adjust the tail, of course, accordingly to whatever is most comfortable and whatever will give me access. Don't forget to do both sides of the tail. I like to fold my tail over to get to the inner parts of the tail and to scrub out the foot pockets. Once again, checking to make sure that it's not, uh, there's nothing left behind on it. Um, this is the best way to get the dirt and gunk out is to make sure that you get, you really scrub the inside of the tail, especially where the foot pockets are. Um, the last step for the um, vinegar bath is going to be flooding the tail one more time and pushing the water out. So again, with a resuscitating motion, as you can see me um, from behind here. So I'm like showing the CPR hands. I'm CPR certified, so I kind of know it from that. And then you're gonna flood the tail one last time, making sure that you get, you get as much fluid through the middle of the fluke as you can. And of course, uh, add a little bit more vinegar um, to the inside of the fluke. Not a lot, maybe a half a cup to about a cup of vinegar. Um, would be sufficient. Then once you have your vinegar water inside your flute, you're going to want to drain your tail overnight. So I just position mine so that the fluke and the body opening where the waist is, is facing downwards. And 
you can see it kind of draining in this video there. This is day two of my tail cleaning. I let my tail sit in the vinegar overnight and now I'm ready to rinse it off. I also have my top, my silicone top, made by Mermaid Kaelin sitting in the vinegar soak overnight because they did swim in the river on this thing. And that is a powerful smell. So, your next step is to rinse the excess vinegar out. And this is where having a detachable shower head comes in handy. This is a great idea to have um, because it gives you a lot of control over the water. Again, I'm gonna put it to hot water. Hot enough to kind of, like, I can tolerate it. But still, pretty hot, okay? So, you're going to want to rinse, really rinse off your tail. Use um, fairly hot water to rinse your silicone top off. Uh, I would suggest focusing more on the pads because that's what really soaked up the vinegar bath. So because it's made out of cloth. So I will um, rinse it off with fresh water and then I'll squeeze it out and then I'll rinse it off again. Um, don't wring out your silicone equipment. It's not made for wringing out. It's not made for the washing machine or the dryer obviously. So um, just squeeze it out as best as you can and then uh, hang it on a hanger to dry. Once my tops are washed, I will rinse out my silicone tail after it's been um, soaking in vinegar overnight. It's going to smell really bad like vinegar. So I will take my shower head and I will rinse the inside and the outside of the tail. You can see it draining there. Um, I usually put most of my focus on the inside of the tail because that's obviously where the vinegar was soaking. Um, so you can see it drain the fresh water and whatever vinegar residues there. I'll flip it over and also rinse out the other side. You want to be really, really thorough when you're rinsing off your tail because you don't want to leave vinegar residue. Vinegar is an acid and it can irritate your skin. Um, so be sure to really rinse off your tail well if you don't want to get uh, an skin irritation of any kind. So the next step is going to be putting back the foot pocket stabilizers that you took out earlier. I found that the best way to do this is to fold your tail or roll your tail up halfway through. I have a merination tail so I tend to fold it up instead of rolling it up um, and then putting it back in, making sure that it's in all the way. So this is my tail towel. It looks like a mermaid tail and it's round and circular. Any towel will do. It's not really specific for a tail, I just got this thing at five below because it had a mermaid tail on it and it was circular. So you take any towel and you're going to want to dry the body as much as you can. I use the towel to dry the outside of the tail as much as I can and it also helps to help me pick it up. I do a little kind of bouncy motion to um, get rid of as much water as I can that's in the fluke and I take it out of the so this is our little bident. This is where the tail will go, and this is this is what attached to the base, and this is the base. This is our drying mechanism for this tail. The first thing we usually do is we will screw in we might um, do an updated uh, make an updated version of this and like replace this with metal and then like do a tutorial on how to do it. If that's something that you guys want to see, give this video a like and tell me in the comments below. I'll probably do a poll 
um, if you're curious on how this was made. There is a tutorial online that we did find for it, but we kind of modified it. Um, just another thing though that I want to add is that it's not a good idea to keep your tail on the stand for very long because Pushing anything into the foot pockets can cause it to collapse or tear because the fluke is so heavy and it can cause your silicone to pierce through the um, through the trident. So you have to be very careful and very wary when you do this kind of tail drying method. Um, but it gets the work done because the gravity pulls the water rather down through the body and um, it's not a 100% technique. You do have to use a fan. So this is my tail. I brought it over from the bathroom after I had tried to dry the outside as much as I can. You want to put it on some kind of clean mat or something because you don't want all the dirt and dust from your floor, if you have a dirty floor, to stick to. You take your bident, right? You feel for where the foot pocket is. You make sure that the curve of the foot pocket is facing up. It's facing you so that you know how to control the um, tail. You take your your bident and you stick it inside and you reach in and make sure that you didn't catch the um, straps and that it's fully inside the foot pockets. You don't want it to be out here because it can pierce the tail. So you want it to make you want to make sure that this thing is in your foot pocket. And you don't want it to be up here above the foot pocket because that could pierce your tail. So you have to make sure it's in the foot pocket. So the next thing you do is you'll pick it up by the fluke. A lot of people will want to instinctually like pick it up from here, but good luck with that because it's a heavy tail. You All of the weight is on the fluke, you're going to want to pick it up by the fluke. And then you just use one hand to support that if you can. Sometimes you can have two people doing this. It's usually better, but... Usually better when your merch so, tender does it. Whoop. Yeah, it is better when your merch tender does it. So you hold the fluke with one hand, and then you stabilize the bident with the other hand. And then you kind of just try to insert it into the base. Just like that. You want to make sure it's on there good so it doesn't lean either way and then break. When you pull down to secure it, do not pull down on the fluke. Pull down on the bident. Yep because you don't want any extra pressure on the foot pockets. Nope, exactly. See how it's still dripping? There's no way for you to really get all of that excess water out unless you use gravity. So I always found that this is a really good method. I know a lot of mermaids are tempted to use this as like a display thing, but I honestly don't suggest it. Rich Taylor does it. I think he has a special way of doing it, or it doesn't break his, um, it doesn't, it won't break his tails. But I, personally, if you ask me, I don't suggest ever using this as a display. Um, I keep my tail, when it's dry, folded up into its box or its bag. So I would just do this for drying purposes, maybe a couple hours, maximum overnight, but no longer than that because this is a lot of uh, pressure. I also like to flip the fluke kind of like that so it's not leaning more to one side or the other. So you kind of just do your best. And it doesn't, it won't like crack your mono fin. If your tail has a finis competitor, I honestly don't suggest ever using this method at all because the finis competitor is so heavy and stiff that it'll crack at any kind of um, weight. So. If you have a finis competitor in your fluke, don't ask me, but I definitely don't suggest this method. I like to put the tail towel underneath so that it absorbs the dripping water. And of course, I don't like keeping this thing folded up like that, so I usually would just pull it down. have a $2,000 plus tail, I always suggest getting one of these. This cost me $40 off of Amazon and it is a bouncy house 
Okay, it's actually, this one's a floor fan, but you can also use a bouncy house fan. My friend Ariel uses a bouncy house fan and it works wonders. This actually angles up into my tail, so it's perfect. And we're back. So it's been a couple of hours since I um, rinsed off my tail and put it up on the stand to dry. You can do a quick check by putting your hand in. It's going to be a little bit damp, but for the most part, the body should be dry on the inside. Um, it's okay if there's going to be a little bit of water because we are going to dry it some more. Um, so now what you're going to want to do is take the towel from underneath here. It's going to be a little damp because obviously the gravity has been pulling all the water down. So you're gonna take your time, make sure you have a mat or something clean ready to put your tail on um, to dry. This is just the mat that I use to put my tail on and off when I'm at the pool. So the first thing you're going to do is fold this up. So you'll take the stand You'll try to lift it up. And then you're going to pull the button out gently by shimmying it out. your fan, which is sitting right here, plugged in. You don't even really need a pool noodle to do this because the lip of the fan fits perfectly into the body opening of the tail. So For you anyway. For my tail, yeah. For if you're a lot skinnier or smaller, you might need a pool noodle to prop it open, but my tail doesn't need it. I'm doing this checking to make sure that the stabilizers are still inside the foot pockets and that the straps are still attached. Also going to pull my strap ribbon up like that out of the way because when the fan is on, it tends to blow around and it sounds like a storm. part is in the bottom and then the curve of the foot pocket part is in the top. So you leave this for another couple of hours uh, and your tail should be dry by the end of all this madness. Why do we dry our tail as best we can? Because if we don't dry your tail, the stale water or the stagnant water will sit inside your tail and it causes mold growth. And if you get mold in your tail, it's really difficult to take out. So it irritates your skin if you have mold growth and you leave it alone. So it's better to dry your tail after every swim. Um, I only do this full complete process. The I call it a, a full vinegar bath. After every third or fourth swim in a pool, or after every second swim in a natural body of water. After I swim in a swimming pool, what I'll usually do is I'll put it in the tub, I'll use the shower head, and I'll just rinse off the tail inside and out to make sure that all the chlorine is gone from the tail. And then I'll um, set it up through the drying process. Sometimes I would put the fan up when it's on the uh, thing if it's not that wet, but this is a this is a good drying plan. These things are also pretty cheap. Like I said, they cost like forty dollars, and 
but they're pretty portable. You can take them with you when you travel. They're small, and it's really good to just keep your kid with your eye. That's really what we as mermaids emphasize when we own a silicone tail, because silicone is kind of a very finicky thing, you know? It's very durable, but at the same time, it's also very delicate, so you have to take care of your things, take care of your investment. Anyway, um, this is it for my silicone tail video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and found, found it helpful. Uh, if you could, if you like videos like this, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so that you can get updated on all of my mermaid adventures. Um, I don't know what else. So I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye!